Today we're going to do a teardown of a piece of test equipment which I've had for a long time. I've been using it for probably uh, 25 years now. It's one of the pieces of test equipment that I built. It's my ESR meter, which is a Dick Smith design, but the one, this one here is actually a Bob Parker. And I think it was like 95, somewhere in there that I put this one together. Anyway, we're going to take it apart and show you guys the internal workings. I can't believe that uh, in the 10 years, I've been shooting videos and using my little ESR meter that I haven't actually shown you guys what this thing looks like inside. So today... I'm going to take it apart and let you guys peek at my my terrible workmanship from I don't remember what year I did this. It would have been mid 80s, I guess, mid to late 80s when it first came out. I remember I was working at the TV shop that I worked at and our local supplier Main Electronics, the owner of Main Electronics, he was crowing about this ESR tester. He says, "Oh, you guys got to get one of these things." He says, biggest time saver you're ever going to have you got to get one of these things and the boss would not spring for one they were only about 70 bucks or so and the boss would not buy one so i had to buy it myself and put it together and so this is the unit here and uh, we'll take out the circuit board here and let you guys see what's in it And I just say all these years I've been using this thing and uh, I've never shown it off. There are clones of this kit readily available that you can build as a kit and then you too can have your own ESR meter. You can also buy ready-made ones for those that uh, are afraid of doing a type of component mounting and soldering. But there is the, uh, there's the circuit. Now some have asked, they say, well, why can't we just get a, a copy of the schematic or make a, you know, make a copy of the board? And the reason why that's not really feasible is because of this uh, Z-Log processor. It's got a custom load on it, so without the code, you're not doing much. But that's the inside of this thing. As you can see, there's not really a lot to it. it took me, uh, I don't know, I probably spent a couple of hours if that but uh, as you can see there's the, the circuit board nothing silk screened on this this is uh, follow the drawing on the on the parts layout and mount your components accordingly but it's not rocket science because you know there's just some it's all through hole but just resistors they use an IC socket for the LEDs so you can just plug the LEDs in and some of these may have blue LEDs. This one's got orange LEDs with the red glass. But that's the that's the unit itself. As you can see, it's got what uh, twelve fourteen transistors, two ICs. This one here being the display driver IC. It's an MC one four zero nine. For BCP, so this is going to be a a BCD to uh, seven segment decoder. You can see if you look at the uh, the traces here, the traces from the decoder goes up to the uh, IC socket that the displays are plugged into. But everything is basically done by the one chip. This is what's doing the measurements, and it's got an oscillator circuit on it to generate the the high frequency signal that is pass through the capacitor and then it's measured and there are uh, calibration controls on here that are used to calibrate it I forget the process to do it but it was in the instructions you set them to specific voltages if I remembered correctly it uses a standard 3.579545 which is a an NTSC uh, color burst crystal that's what it's using as a reference and that's basically it there's not really that much of a mystery to what's inside these things but, you know, I've had this thing for years, and I've never shown you guys what the inside looks like, so now you've seen it, I can put it back together. You like my insulation material? I, I, I borrowed that right from Heath Kit's design. 
right? That's that's what Heathkit used to always do to uh, isolate uh, parts from touching as you'd wrap it in paper. I think Zenith used to do the same thing too. Actually, I know Zenith used to do the same thing because on their System 3 TVs, they used to they used to wrap the uh, the back side of the deflection board had a piece of basically a piece of cardboard attached to it. I think it, it was uh, it probably had some fire retardant on it, but apparently the fire retardant wasn't good enough because a number of them burst into flames and burned people's houses to the ground. And then they started putting a uh, a plastic or uh, fiberglass shield. That was because on the Zenith System Three. TVs. They had this vertical board, that was the high voltage board sat like that, and there was other boards in below, and they didn't want a technician sticking his hand in to say adjust something and getting zapped by high voltage that was on the board, so they put a cover over it to shield it. But see, the original ones were made out of flammable paper. So this just goes on like that. The 9 volt battery. clips on and this just prevents the 9 volt battery from causing a short circuit. I think I actually had these tucked in below like that when I had it together before and just had the battery on it like that. Anyway, that's uh, that's what it looks like. Even has a little EA come up when it's turned on. And then you just zero, zero it out by shorting the leads together every time you turn it on. That'll take out any resistance on the lead. So that's good for measuring the capacitor. Anyway, I just thought maybe some of you guys might be interested in seeing what the inside of that little home-built meter looks like. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again real soon. Bye.